thank you for joining us for our Word of the Day. This morning as we're continuing through the Bible, we're going to look at 1 Chronicles chapter number 17. In this chapter, David has brought the ark back to God, uh, back to Jerusalem. Now, the, right now the ark is not in a temple, it's in the tabernacle. They're still in the tabernacle that Moses had built in the wilderness. And David, he has the desire to build a temple for God. And so he goes to Nathan the prophet and he asks Nathan, he says, this is what I want to do. I want to build a temple to honor God. And Nathan says, man, it sounds like a great idea. Go for it. Uh, right after David leaves, God comes to Nathan and tells Nathan that the temple is not to be built by David because David has bloody hands, but it's going to be built by David's son. So Nathan has to go to David, the king, and tell David, the king, that he is not allowed to do what he wants to do. Now, David and Nathan never really had a great relationship, and it wasn't it wasn't anybody's fault but but David's sin. Nathan was a very bold prophet. He would tell David when he was wrong. He didn't pull any punches. Samuel, David loved Samuel, and Samuel, of course, he pointed out David's sin, but Dave, Samuel was more of a, a grandfather, a father figure to David, and now Nathan is the prophet. Samuel's died, Nathan's the prophet, and Nathan's more like a, like a brother who just doesn't have a problem telling you what you're doing wrong. And so the relationship's not the best. And so now Nathan has to go before David and tell David, hey, that thing you wanted to do that I told you you should do, you can't do it. And Nathan, of course, he's worried about how David's going to react because David is the king. David tends to have a temper when he doesn't get his way. And so he's, he's worried that David may kill him, have him killed for this or, or lash out at him. But look how David responds to what Nathan says. It says, and according to, all the, according to all these words and according to all the vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? David's response to God saying no to him is a beautiful picture of how every single one of us should respond to God. There are times in our life where God says no where we want to do something and what we want to do may not be sinful or wicked or selfish. Maybe something that we think, man, it's going to be great for the kingdom of God. It's going to help people. It's going to be a blessing to people. But God doesn't want us to do it. It's not in God's will. And so God tells us no. And instead of getting angry, instead of getting bitter, instead of throwing a temper tantrum or just doing what we want to do anyway and forgetting about God and not worrying about it, we should follow the example of David. David, he goes before God and he sits quietly before the Lord. He was, he was, yes, he was upset he wasn't able to build a temple, but there was a lot he could do. Until he died, he got all the, uh, the plans and all the materials for the temple ready so that when Solomon was king, it could quickly be built. So he still had things he could do. He couldn't do what he wanted to do, but he could still do a lot for God. So he didn't get angry and bitter at God. He, he sat before God and he didn't complain about what he couldn't do. He thanked God for being so good to him in the past and allowing him to do what he could do. Then he, he prays to God and says, God, who am I? Who am I to, to doubt you or to put myself above you? He's saying, God, you have been so good to me. You are the creator of the universe. You are the the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are sovereign over all. You see how everything's going to work out, not just for my good, but for the glory of your kingdom. And so he says, God, I trust you. That's hard for us sometimes to do, to go to God when God tells us, no, you can't do that thing you want to do. Or this is what I want you to do instead of what you want to do. It's hard for us sometimes to go to God, put aside our pride, say, God, I trust you. But that's our response because God knows better than all of us. God knows how every decision you make and every action you do is going to affect not just you, but those around you in your life and those in the future that you may not even know. God knows everything. And our response to God when he tells us not to do what we want to do or tells us to do something we don't think that we should do is to say, God, you're God. I'm not. I trust you. I hope that's your response to everything God tells us. Thanks so much for joining us for our Word of the Day. Be sure to be back here Monday as we continue through the Bible. Hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Has a great day on Sunday worshiping God with 
your local church. Be sure to be faithful to your house of God, singing the praises of God with your congregation, fellowshipping with with the people of God, and, and listening to the word that God has for you. Have a blessed day. Have a great weekend.